So we just saw that the solution to this uh, non-homogeneous first order linear ODE can be expressed as um, the, the integral e to the minus at minus tau times f of tau d tau. So what we've done is we've taken the um, uh, so so the way that we want to see this is we looked at the solution for uh, the homogeneous version and we looked at the the solutions for the homogeneous versions started at different points in time and integrated them all together and found that the net effect was equivalent to just looking at the non-homogeneous version. So let's continue looking at this. So for a fixed uh, time, fixed moment in time tau, let um, w sub tau, so this is going to be the shift forward in time of w, be the solution uh, <coughs> of w prime plus a w equals zero. So we've where we've got um, initial condition given by the value of f at tau. So w sub tau here, I, I just want to point out a couple of things. First off, this tau is not indicating any derivative. Um, the idea here is that there's just there's a whole family of these functions w of t, and so these are the ones that um, the book would would notate like this with a semicolon. Um, I find this notation sort of confuses the roles of the variables, makes it a little bit more difficult to see, but it the idea should be that this is a family that is. Uh, parameterized by tau. So you have a w of t for every value of tau. OK. Um, so let's see. So if we have w sub tau be the solution of this, then uh, w tau of 0 is f of tau. And w tau prime, so if we t uh, plus a w tau equals 0, because it's a solution of the ODE. And from that, we know that w tau of t is going to be f of tau e to the minus a t. So we start with that initial amount of radioactive material f of tau. And we evolve it forward in time by multiplying by the decaying exponential to find out how much is left at time t. So <clears throat> then uh, this, this shifted version here is the solution with, I, with initial condition uh, f of tau. I'm just writing down what I said before. Evolved forward in time by time t. And that's forward in time from t equals 0. Um, <clears throat> so then the combination of all these kinds of things. Um, oh, it's actually, sorry, let me back up. Delete, delete, delete. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if we want to start at some time that's uh, not necessarily 0 with initial condition f of tau, 
and we want to evolve forward from tau, um, <coughs> then the thing that we're going to be looking at is w tau t minus tau, which is e to the minus a t minus tau f of tau. And so if we take all these and we integrate them together to find the uh, combined effect, we get that y is the collection or the integration from 0 to t of e to the minus a t minus tau f of tau d tau. <coughs> and so what we got there is the integral from 0 to t of the um, shifted and delayed uh, function, w tau t minus tau. And so that's going to be the thing that works for us uh, more generally. So the idea here is that for a fixed time tau, uh, just to discretize it a little bit, you should be able to um, evolve the solution forward some small amount. So forward in time to tau plus d tau, so we go th forward some little increment. Um, and you should be able to evolve forward like this by uh, adding in the effects of uh, outside forces, which in our notation will be given by f of tau d tau. And so that means that um, this shifted one that we have um, yeah. corresponds, at least if you look at t minus tau equals 0, corresponds to w tau at 0 being equal to f of tau. OK. So at last, we have Duhamel's principle stated. So Duhamel's principle says that the solution of y prime plus a y equals f with uh, initial condition 0. If we look at this guy, in order to find it, <coughs> um, so here's what we do. We solve. the homogeneous solution where the value is given by f of 0. And, and then use this to get the solution um, of w prime plus a w equals 0 with initial condition f of tau at time tau. And then 
y is going to be the integral of all of these guys.